All right. So once again, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Samantha Bowers, consultant for continuing education. Thanks everyone for joining us today. And our guest for this special edition of Pop YS Live is Peg Gay of the Fisher Mapleton Memorial Library. Fisher Whiting Memorial, Memorial Library, Library in Mapleton. In Mapleton. And Peg, how long have you been the director there? Um, be seven years in November. Seven years in November. I taught right. taught high school science for twenty years, Woo. and then I became got my master's in library science and became the school librarian. And then I'm here. Then you're here. Great. Well, I know you're going to tell us a little bit more about what you've been up to with the schools. So I will let you um, share your screen. Um, if there's anything else you want to say by introduction, by way of introduction, feel free. Uh, while Peg's getting set up, I will say that I tapped her to do this presentation after um, attending the director roundtable in Carroll, Iowa, where Peg was there um, attending the roundtable as a productive discussant, um, but bemoaning the fact that she was not at the schools that day with her 3D pens. So as we started, as we started thinking about, okay, we've got a little bit of time before the new youth services consultant starts, and we'll talk more about that at the end. Who can we get to talk about something fun and exciting? I thought, I bet Miss Peg would like to come and tell us about everything she does in the schools, since I know that she does get up to a lot of fun stuff there. So um, thanks so much for your time and being here today, Peg, and I will turn it over to you. All right. Thanks, Samantha. Um, I want to start out with saying I'm not doing anything more than a lot of other people are doing out there. Um, I'm also fortunate enough that I am only two blocks from the school, so I can pop in and pop out pretty easily. And on top of that, the library is covered every hour that we're open. So that allows me to go and do some things that um, I wouldn't be able to do if I was had to be here and, and in charge of the library. So um, just makes it a little bit easier for me to get in and out of there. Um, anyway, we'll get started here, connecting your library's programming and services to the schools. So in the beginning, I started and I was looking through the long-term goals, the, the plans that um, were established before I started. And one of them said to go into the local preschool and read to them, have a story time every so often. So I started with that, um, contacted the preschool teacher and she was very open to it. So I started going in and I would go oh, maybe every other month and um, read to her and have some kind of activity, read about ducks with this story. And we made a little duck mask and marched around as ducks in the classroom. So I always try and do something with the story and then something that relates, whether it's an activity, a song or a craft. So then I was approached um, by the school librarian for National Library Week, would I want to go into each and every classroom? And I said, well, sure, I can do that. And I'm going, I don't know how to do this, you know, to, so I had to plan an extra book for each of the classrooms and an activity, but um, I did get that done. So within that year, I was into each and every classroom. Here we were reading about the king of kindergarten. And um, then we made crowns for all of the kindergartners. And I should tell you that our school has um, 13 classrooms. I go into the pre-K um, classroom that is the Head Start, the three-year-old um, preschoolers up through fifth grade at our local elementary here. So I was visiting every one of the classrooms um, that year, and then it, it just progressed, and, and I started reaching out just to the teachers, and they were so open to have me come more often and read to the kids. Um, so I started doing it on a monthly basis. Well, how do you get that all lined up um, without having to run back and forth to the school? Sometimes it's a challenge. but um, I started just an email. 
I, I have this week open, this times during these days, and we would email back and forth. And I finally got smart and I made a Google Doc. And I actually, this is the one that I have for my upcoming story time at the school in October. And um, I put it out to the teachers this morning about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I already had eight of the 13 teachers um, signed into it and said, we want this time. And I've got this many students. And um, I just asked them to, to remind me how many students they have. So I know I have enough supplies if I do a craft for them. So this Google Doc has started saving me a lot of time with them that um, I don't have to go back and forth. The only problem is, well, if you look at Wednesday at one o'clock, I have to be down there for the second grade class. And then I don't have to be in another class until 2.30. So thank goodness I am only two blocks away from the school because there is a lot of in and out for me with that. So then I came up with the bright idea. What else can I do? What can I promote at the school? So once or twice a year, I pop in. Um, I get in touch with the teachers. Can I pop in for five minutes and tell the kids? Um, this particular one was for Dr. Seuss's birthday. And I had a reading challenge to, for all of the kids. And if they read Dr. Seuss books, and I don't remember how many there were supposed to read, but so many Dr. Seuss books, then they could come down and get a, a sucker or a sticker or something from the um, public library. So I've done that for several things. Um, National Library Week, it's just a pop in five minutes, say something, maybe 10 minutes, do a real quick activity or something. And then I'm out of the classroom. Otherwise, when I go in to read to them, I usually take about 25 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. Um, I read a story and then do some activity or craft. And I will tell you right now, I am not a singer. In fact, my high school music teacher paid me not to sing. Not really, but... I am not a singer, and the first song I decided to do with preschool, I was just so scared, maybe. I, I just lost the song. So now I carry with me a CD player and a CD, so I don't actually have to carry the tune. Saves me anyway. So anyway, I go in and, and I promote different things. Um, that are going on either at the library or, you know, it's library week or something like that. So I go in and I, and I promote that for us. Another thing that um, I reached out to see if the classrooms wanted to come help plant flowers, um, spread our mulch, saves me from having to do all of it. And they love to come down and help plant the, the flowers around the library. Um, I usually get one or two classes that will come down and, and uh, help, help me out. They'll rake, they pick up the stuff. They actually rake more than I want them to sometimes. But And then it gives them that connection. Um, they planted something. They're part of the library. They start taking ownership and, and help take better care of it, I think. So, so I always have somebody come down in the spring and help out with that. Then this was one of the activities that I did with one of the classes. Um, I called it Little Picasso. And I approached the teacher and I said, if I took some pictures of different people in our community, and the lady there happens to be the city clerk, different people in our community and have kids paint pictures of them. And then I put them up at the library and we had guessing games. Teach, uh, patrons tried to figure out who, who each of these pictures was. And, and that really went over very well. Um, I went around, took the pictures, 
And then I took the pictures to school and the paper and the kids painted the pictures. And then I brought them back and put them up in the library after I kind of framed them. So that was a, a fun activity for the kids to do. Then we have our multi-generational book club. And that started out before COVID. I reached out to a teacher. I said, you know, if my book club, by adult book club, were to read a story, would you want to have your kids come to the library and discuss that story with them? And then COVID hit and we didn't succeed. So last year I approached the teacher again and we did get something going. We actually read five books together. So the first book, um, the teacher was already reading it. And I said, well, why don't I get some of those books? And so the teacher actually purchased the books for my adult book club um, readers. And it was, I survived um, September 11th. And um, she purchased those books. And then when we started talking how much fun it was, the, the ladies, each one of them sitting down and talking to two or three kids about the story, about where they were. Um, my book club really enjoyed it. So we just um, kind of blossomed from there. And we ended up doing the five books. So, all right, September 11th, we did the the book, um, I Survived September 11th. And then for um, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, it was the 80th anniversary this year. So we um, did I Survived the bombing of um, Pearl Harbor. And then when we started looking ahead, it was like we came up with three more books that we wanted to do. And I knew most of my um, book club would be very familiar with um, the eruption of Mount St. Helens. So I did the, um, I survived um, the eruption of Mount St. Helens and we all were able to discuss that. And the next book we did, we decided to do a classic. So we did the Swiss Family Robinson. And then after that, we did the stars. Oh, I got to look it up. The stars are scattered. And it was a graphic novel. And it was about refugees um, and how they lived in refugee camps. So then we, um, I'm going to back up. We also had a program um, Right, after, right at September 11th, um, we had a speaker come in and this teacher brought her classroom to the speaker at our community center, along with all the adults that were there. But then I also had a, a speaker planned for um, coming to talk to us about the refugees that they help out in um, the state of Georgia. She was visiting relatives in Council Bluffs and the Council Bluff um, librarian reached out and said, is anybody interested in having this speaker? And so I got it set up. And then we read that book um, in book club. And I said, wouldn't that be awesome if the kids could talk to her and find out about the refugees that live around her? So I reached out to her to see if she was open to that, and she was very willing. So I took her up to the schoolroom where these kids that we had book club with um, have their class, and she went in and she visited with them. And then she came to the library and visited with, um, with the adults that came to our program. So... It was um, a very rewarding experience, and she said she felt so good about it. So the next thing I've done just last week was the steam trailer from Iowa PBS. <coughs> and I put the contact for the person that I set it up with. It was Angela Hyatt. 
and I had every classroom come to the library. And that was 13 classrooms for an hour. Each one of them got to stay for an hour. And I set it up with um, stations. So I had a pre preschool through about first grades, um, five stations for them. And then the second through fifth grade, um, five stations for them. And when they got there, I split them up and there were three or four kids at each station and I moved them every six minutes. So that took about 30 minutes to get through those stations. And then I let them play with anything else that I had it all set out, anything else that was on the steam trailer. It was such an amazing experience. The kids were excited. Um, it just, they walked away, the teachers walked away with very positive comments about this. So I've got a couple more um, pictures of different things that they do. The picture on the on my right, I hope it's your right, is um, the sun blocks. And I'd never seen sun blocks, and they are pretty, pretty cool. So if you've not seen them, check out some blocks. And then the kids started building a gate around the library entrance. And I finally went, had to go over to them. And they said, how are people going to get into our library if they come here? So they, uh, they moved it back out uh, a ways away from the door and continued to build. And then the magna formers um, on the left there, the two guys built something that they were pretty proud of. So. It was a, a very cool experience for, for everyone. I even had um, the homeschool group um, set up an hour time that they could come. And then I reached out to, we have a Catholic school that is about 10 miles away from our town and reached out to them. And they came in two separate groups, a K2 on, on one day and then a three through six on the on the second day so very very good experience and if you uh you know I've got the science background so I it didn't scare me at all but when you open up this trailer it's like what all is in this there are there are about 40 different activities that the kids can participate in um but it, when the kids show up I said you know, you may not know what to do or how to how to do something with what you see in front of you, but this is the time to use your brain, use your imagination. Um, you figure it out. You find out what you can make out of it. It doesn't have to be followed following any of the rules. So, but um, very very positive experience. Very exhausting. Um, I would start at nine o'clock in the morning and get everything unloaded from the trailer. They send tables. We also used our own tables too, just to have more stations set up. Um, I'd start at nine o'clock, get it unloaded, have my first class here by 10, and I wouldn't quit until three o'clock. I just had classes one right after the other. And um, so it was very exhausting, but it was also very rewarding. Um, another thing I do is I get um, the kids, the teachers, to bring their classrooms down to the um, library. They only have two blocks, and they are excited to come down and see us. But I do that in May and um, try and promote our summer reading, get the kids excited about attending. And this year, it, you know, it really helps. So we had 13 programs. 772 people attended our programs and Mapleton's not that big. We're just under 1,200 for population. Our final party was at the swimming pool. So I sit down right there with my feet in the water and read a story to the kids. And then at the very end, they got to give me a shaving cream and silly string hairdo. And they were excited to do that. Um, virtual reality goes to school. 
while we were while we had our um, steam trailer out there, I visited briefly with the second grade teacher, and I said, yesterday after I finished with the steam trailer, I grabbed our virtual reality goggles and I hauled them over to the church, which is just a block away. And I said there were 11 ladies that got to spend a few minutes, five minutes or so in Jerusalem. And she got, she was sitting there and she says, that makes me think our class has a reading unit on ancient Asian civilization. So I am working very hard to try and find a kid appropriate um, virtual reality tour of somewhere in, in Asia from there, from the ancient Asian civilization. Once I find that, um, I will approach her and see if she's agreeable to it. Then we'll have to send um, slips home to parents. I'm a little leery with having second graders um, use the virtual reality goggles. Um, my biggest concern would be somebody would um, you know, possibly have a seizure or something like that. So I want the parents to be very aware of, of what could happen with the virtual reality. Um, and then if, if it all goes well after a couple of tries with the second graders, then I'll open it up and, and have other classrooms that are interested in me coming and sharing the virtual reality. We do have two sets of the Oculus 2 um, virtual reality goggles. So um, for the church visit that I had, I um, was relying on their internet and that was not a good thing. I ended up having to make a hotspot with my phone. So if you um, choose to do something like that, just be aware that you have to have that backup plan. We also, as Sam said, had the 3D pens and um, they came at the end of the school year last year. So I've played around with them a little bit with some kids this summer, um, but I will take them to the fourth or fifth grade classroom and let them design something with um, 3D pens. We're also fortunate enough that our friends group bought a Glowforge and it is a laser printer. And I want to have the kids design maybe like a, um, a ceramic tile or something like that for their classroom. Um, and then after the design is complete, have them come to the library and um, actually print it on the Glowforge. Some cool things coming yet. We do our after school programs. Um, I know that's not me going to the school, but I send these to the school and the kids take them home. Um, it's just a little fourth sheet. So here's what we're doing in October. They'll do the crazy squirrels on the 4th and flying ghosts on the 11th, moon sand on the 18th and monsters on the 25th. Um, I do limit it to 25 kids. I'm at 26 now. I usually will allow a few more. Um, we get anywhere from 15 to, to 30 that show up for these programs usually. And I did um, limit it down to the kindergarten through fifth grade because the kindergartners usually need a lot of help and the fifth graders are pretty independent. So we just plan one activity for them and um, we have enough helpers that we help those younger ones. Our average age would be um, usually the second and third graders we get the most of. Um, we are having actually on Thursday, um, Abe Lincoln come in. Um, it's Kevin Woods, he plays Abe Lincoln. And I reached out to the schools and we have four classrooms that are coming to um, that program. So um, I actually had to move it to the community center because our library is pretty small. So our, my future plans, um, I know this isn't during school, but an after school STEAM program. 
And I don't know if you can see behind me those two big white tubs. I got those from the extension agents um, and they brought those over for me to look at. So I'm gonna start a STEM program for third through fifth grade. Uh, I have a high school teacher that has approached me and is very interested in a multi-generational book club. My book club ladies kind of said, no, they weren't very interested. So I'm going to reach out to the community and see if I can find a few people that are interested in participating in one or two different book clubs um, with the high school kids. And then I also want to get to the high school and promote Brain Fuse Help Now to the, to the students so they are familiar with what's there, um, what they can use. So I don't have anything else. Is there anything, any questions, Sam? We did have some questions roll through and I kind of tried to group them. Uh, I tried to kind of group them together by theme. So uh, we had a few questions about the book club that you mentioned. And so the one that you're running now, what ages is that for? I'm doing it with the third grade classroom. Okay. And my adult book club. And your regular book club. Yes. And then does that meet at your library or at the school? They walk down here. And they walk down here. Um, my book club meets at one o'clock. So they were last year, they walked down at 1230. So that gave us, it was a pretty rushed, rushed thing, but it gave us a half an hour to, to discuss. And it is so fun when, when those young students look at, look at the, the ladies from my book club and say, what was your favorite part or who was your favorite character? So it, it was a very rewarding experience for me as well as for um, the kids in my book club. That's awesome. I, when you told me about that, I just thought it was so neat. And especially when you can tie it to a current event like the anniversary of 9-11 and another library program that you already have going on. I mean, what a great way to cross promote all of that. Um, and of course, young, young kids, I mean, in third graders would not have been born anywhere close to 9-11. So yeah. to them, it's as obscure as Pearl Harbor, perhaps, to say this happened before I was born and I don't have a clue about it. And I was so ex excited to do the Mount St. Helens one because I actually have a jar of Mount St. Helens ash so I could bring that and the kids could actually see it. You yeah. know, whatever you can do to make it real for them. And then I was going to ask with uh, the graphic novel that you read, how did your book club handle that? Did they like the graphic novel format? Um, they aren't a fan. That's the second graphic novel that I've had them read. I also had them just for our book club. We read Hey Kiddo. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, they, they're kind of kind of open to that. But, you know, um, the kids one was maybe a little too young for them. Sure. But that's, that's, I mean, a good way, good, good for you for exposing them to other stuff. Um, I also just wanted to say, I love the yard work component, um, that you're involving the kids in, you know, just that kind of a community bettering. I think that's is really fostering for lifelong skills too. Um, I thought that was, and we had a couple of comments in the chat um, that other people thought that was a neat idea. Okay, the next set of questions is kind of tied to the classroom visits that you do. So was that, um, is that once a month that you could go to each classroom? It's once a month, 13 okay. classrooms. Um, to make it a little bit easier on myself, I use the same book and same activity for okay. um, the two preschool classrooms. Okay. Then the kindergarten, I they're kind of young enough. I, I use a different book for them. Okay. Then I use the same one for first and second, then third and fourth, and then I'll do a separate one for the fifth grade. Okay. And so what, what kind of books have you found that your older grades have really connected with? I'm assuming you're not doing King of Kindergarten with your fifth graders. No, I just use all, you know, anything that, that I walk in there. Um, uh, 
Woodson has a, a book about being kind to each other. Um, I have a book that's got a riddle in it that as you go through it, they, they um, kind of are open to that. Um, the, the donkey that, I don't even remember the name of the, the book, somebody's really interested, but there's something about he's got an egg, but it's a watermelon. And it's got a lot of math in it. So mm -hmm. I try and, and find something that is age appropriate for each each group that I do. But it's still a picture book read aloud. Yes, it is. Yeah. And a craft too then? Usually a craft or um, I'll read the, there was a, an old woman that swallowed the universe or one of those stories. And so then I can get into that one goes down to the very tiniest um, of electrons and protons of, of the atoms. And so I can use my science background there and, and teach them some things about um, the atom. So, or it's bring a, a, the CDs along and, and sing a song. I love your story about being paid not to sing uh, <laughs> high school choir. That was cute. Um, are you hauling all the craft supplies back and forth then, or is some of that coming from the school? I haul them all back and forth. Oh, my goodness. So you have like a pretty nice wagon then that you walk those two blocks with or you're. Uh... No, I drive it. <laughs> yeah, you got you got those muscles, the, the totes in and out of the car. I can yeah. see. It. And I don't know if I told you, Sam, but when we had. Um, we were shut down for COVID and I wasn't going to the school. We still zoomed every month with, with the kids. And um, I got to tell you this one first grade teacher, we read a, a story about a chicken and I'm like, so I would try and do some drawing. I did cut out some craft things for some of the classrooms um, and send them to the school but I tried to do whatever I could do over Zoom, drawing, singing. So that one day I read to the first graders um, about the chicken and I thought, well, let's do the chicken dance. So I'm sitting here in front of my computer doing the chicken dance. And I have two big windows in the office. And um, one of the older gentlemen that was in the library went up to the staff and said, what is wrong with her? So I think that is so funny when, you know. Is Miss, is Miss Peg okay? Do I need to call the board president for an intervention? Is everything yeah. all right? Yeah. That's um, someone in the chat kind of hinted at a question that I had as well, which is, is there a library in the school in your town here? Yes. There is. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the school librarian is on board with all of this too. I was kind of feeling like, you know, there's, there's could be some budding of heads, but there's also some great collaboration that could happen. Yes, yes. And she is very, very open to it. In fact, um, when I send out that Google Doc and the information, I never included her. And this year, one of the teachers came back and said, why don't you add her onto this? Because she's, she's very interested. Um, she is split between four buildings. Mm -hmm. She goes to different schools. Um, so they just, they have somebody that is hired just to, to handle the kids coming in and checking out books. I don't know if they actually do anything else when, when the kids go or not. So actually having that extra dose of um, kind of literacy instruction, I mean, really benefits you, the library, and then you get all that exposure to the kids, but also the kids in the school district and in the whole community, right? Yeah. And the librarian reaches out to me every time that um, she's in charge of the battle of the books for the middle school, high school. And so she always reaches out to me. Do you have several copies? Can you get me copies of this book? So, yeah, she she's she comes in a lot and works with us a lot. That's great. Um, have you ever and this is maybe kind of the last question on these classroom visits, but have you ever been able to tie it or do you tie it at all to anything going on in the school? Uh, yes. Or like, so if the fifth grade is talking about planets, you bring the planet book or whatever, do you try and tie yeah. things? 
and I I have told them if if there's something they want me to read about, but most generally they just say just bring whatever you want. But yes, if there is something that they're studying or you know like this um, ancient uh, Asian civilization, um, I've already got a couple of things that I want to share with the kids when they get into that reading unit. Yeah, well, I think that speaks just to the amount of trust and dedication and program building that you've done over your tenure in the library. And of course, having that connection to the school as a former teacher helps too. Yeah. Um, okay. The trailer, we had a couple questions. Oh, before we move on, one person says battle of the books. Is this like a March madness kind of thing where they have a bracket? Um, I am not very familiar with the Battle of the Book because I only provide the books, but um, the kids are given a list of 20 books that their group has to read, and and then they get together and they answer questions about them, and the more kids then that you get to read a particular book, the, the more likely that they will know the answers to them, so she tries to get multiple copies of, of books. But I don't know, I, I think it happens in Des Moines, but I don't know a whole lot about the, the actual competition. Yeah, um, this is where we need our new youth services person because I'm sure she would have all the answers to this and it's out of my purview a little bit. Um, okay, um, we do have a few things coming in the chat. It's a competition with teams um, and then they, co- go, they must go to the AEA to compete against other schools with it, um, on that topic. So thanks to those in chat who filled in those that question mark for us. Okay, the STEM trailer, um, you said that was through Iowa PBS. Yes. And your contact for that was? Angela Hyatt. And it was on that one slide, but I also have it on my notes here. And so was someone from Iowa PBS around to lead activities or they kind of dropped it off and said, have fun, Peg? They brought the trailer on Monday morning, dropped it off, got it set up where I wanted it and said, goodbye. We'll see you on Friday. And they come back and they do kind of help. They do kind of help re-situate everything and get it tied down but I think I had more of an idea of, of it than the gal that was helping me restock it. But, um, and then they take off with it. It costs yeah. nothing. It's free. They deliver it. They pick it up. Um, um, another person in chat saying it was a huge hit for them as well. A lot of work, but really cool. Um, and so then do you had K through five coming to that trailer? Or did that go up to the other grades as well? I had the three-year-old preschool to fifth grade from our um, school here in town. Sixth, seventh, and eighth um, go to a different town. They're in Anthem, so it's quite quite a trip. Then Uh, I had the homeschool, and then I did have the Catholic Church from um, Danbury come to it. Well, and I think that connection to the homeschool is also an interesting one. That's such a rich activity that they wouldn't necessarily get exposed to otherwise and the catholic school as well um are you do you have to make sure that everything stays put and doesn't wander off or how does how does that nope. work really? no nope, they don't look the only thing we did have one item that was broken and i pointed it out that um one of the sun blocks got broken and she said that happens and that was all that was said about it so no nope. I think I put the link um, to those some blocks in the chat. So um, that does look like kind of a cool, a cool little thing. Um, I will put a quick plug in that uh, stay tuned early next year. We will be bringing back the STEM fairs uh, as something the state library did pre COVID. We had kind of started them and then COVID put the brakes on it. Uh, But now we're going to do, uh, the STEM fairs again, and the PBS trailer will be at each of our STEM fairs. So if folks are interested in exploring that, uh, stay tuned from the State Library. We're probably looking at doing that in March. Uh, March-ish will probably be our STEM fairs, and we'll have the STEM fair. Uh, we'll have the STEAM trailer there. Excuse me. 
Um, okay. The next question in the chat kind of actually dovetails with one I had for you as well. Um, so it's the virtual reality. So you have two Oculus, but mm -hmm. presumably it sounds like uh, way more kids than that running around. So how do you keep the other kids busy while you've got two people Oculus? I, I haven't started it yet, but okay. I have I have no doubt that the second grade teacher will, you know, she'll have an activity. And I'll take something along to for the kids to um, be doing, and then they just take turns. Mm -hmm. I've only done it with the Methodist Church right now, and sure. they were very That's... patient waiters. <laughs> it's my turn for Jerusalem. No, I think that that will be interesting. Yeah. So my question is, I'm hearing so many different things. You've got the virtual reality, you've got the 3D pens, and a lot of this is really tech oriented. And of course you have a background as a science teacher, so you maybe have a little leg up, but what would you say to someone who's like, oh, I heard about this technology, but I don't know if it's gonna work in my library. The 3D pens um, are fairly easy. Anybody can use them. Um, you do have to be aware that they have they're hot and so um i did open it up to the kids to come in this summer if they wanted to and and i had a few of them take it me up on it and there was one that kind of worried me about how she wasn't concerned at all about how hot it was and she didn't have much control over it so she was i think a second grader so i would i would stay with with fourth and fifth grade if I take it to the school and use it with them. But the 3D pens are pretty easy to, um, to use. Um, the Glowforge, that's yeah. a little more challenging. So, um, but there are so many YouTube videos out there on how to use it. Um, and then I have, I have a steady stream of a handful of people that come in and use the Glowforge. So that's helped me get to, to know it better. Um, but I have one lady that comes in every other month and makes tags because she makes homemade purses and she etches her logo onto the little metal tags that she puts on her purses. So um that I just am learning more and and watching as many YouTube videos or as many classes that I can on that. Um, the virtual reality, that one can stump me pretty quick sometimes, but you just work through it. It's like, why isn't this working? You know, an hour now, probably three hours before I was supposed to take them over to the church to use them. They, they both said they needed an update. And I said, no, nope, never mind. Nope, never mind. Nope. Uh, I says, yeah, you're going to update us. And it's like, oh, I don't have time for this because I got kids coming for the steam trailer. I don't have time for this. Um, so I ended up calling my husband. I said, you need to, to do this for me if you would. And, and he got on to because we have it through our Facebook account. Um, that way the kids can't get on and, and order stuff or do anything with the um, goggles. So, but yeah. You really it's, just hear about something and jump in. I do with both feet, not always very smoothly sometimes, but. Well, as long as you go in feet first, not head yep, first. Yep. Um. So yeah, YouTube's your friend. And then do you have a, an endowment or a grant that you purchase these through? Or how have you, how has some of the tech come into your library financially? Um, the friends of the library have um, been very generous with us. And we also have endowment um, income that we spend every, once a year. But that gives you some nice... I mean, but even some of these things, and I, as one person does ask, is your Glowforge need a vent? Did you have to set up a ventilation system and all of that for it? Yes, we yeah. cut so a hole, a hole in the wall and vented it out outside. So that, that was a bigger project. But some of these, like you could buy a pair of, uh, you could buy an Oculus for less than $1,000? Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's not a gigantic commitment. You have two of them now. You're going to see how it goes. You could get a few more if it really ends up being a hit with the classroom, I suppose. But I like okay. this. We're going to try it and see kind of attitude. Back here. I've got six sets of the um, 3D, 3D pin. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. And I think these have been very stable for us. That's good. That's good. Um, do you have any technology that you've tried that you said, I'm going to buy one of these or buy some of this and see how it goes. And it was just a complete flop. No one liked it. No, I've got a cricket that I don't use very often because um, I just haven't had the time to sit down and learn how to program things for it it's a time and you do like you said you have um you guys are pretty well staffed it sounds like so you have some time off desk time that you can kind of play around with some of this but yeah. um that's exciting how big is um mapleton uh i always said 1200 but i think we came in at 1149 or something like that in this last census okay so just under 12 but that puts you at a b c size in? we're we're still a c we're still a c okay um you'll have to tell us what kind of 3d pen someone asked what what brand have you found most reliable this is the my nt okay oh yeah Min minted all right i'll put that in the chat m y n t 3d yep. Very interesting. Okay, well, I want to say a big thank you to Peg. Um, oh, here's a good, good wrapping, good wrap up question, Miss Peg. How do you, how would you recommend someone reach out to the school if they don't have an established relationship? Start with one teacher and just ask them if you can come in and read to their class. And eventually, you know, the teachers are very welcoming of me. I have never had one of them turn me down. Um, you saw that that Google sheet I put out this morning and I already had eight teachers already signed up for their time slot out of the 13. Now, at some point, um, the end of the week or maybe the beginning of next week, I'll send a reminder to the couple that didn't um, because they get busy. They read the email, they, they walk away from it, they get busy and they don't get it done. So I've never had one of them not sign up, but just start with one, it's, you know, your preschool teacher, your kindergarten teacher, they'll want you in there. So even if it is just kind of an informal, hey, I ran into you in the grocery store, um, what's your class up to kind of thing. Um, yeah. This person mentions in chat, um, have to go through principles quite often for the official communication, but maybe you can start start small. And if it works well for that teacher, she can kind of be an advocate to you up uh, up the chain. Yeah, I I have not had any problems with any of the principles. I've been through three of them here at this this elementary. Now they're they're very open. Um, I just email the teachers directly. Mm -hmm. But it is, I think, because um, you said you started with one teacher doing duck masks, right? Yeah. And you had those those 13 kids. And then how many kids did you say you had come through the steam trailer seven years later? Uh, 258. Yeah. So that's that's program building. And I'll, I mean, that's one thing I want to emphasize to our attendees as well, that um doesn't happen overnight. That's for sure. No, no. Um, you're full time? at your library? Yes. All right. Someone says you get an amazing amount done with your programming and they are not wrong. <laughs> I'm exhausted yeah. some days. Yes. Well, that's when you pull out the camper and drive out <laughs> to the lake, right? Yep. All right. Hey folks, um, I want to say, join me in saying a big thank you to Peg for her work in Mapleton and for putting this presentation on for us. Um, let me pull up. I hope you guys have seen, um, we will have our new youth services librarian starting here at the end of this month. Janae Jackson Doring um, was hired. Uh, she will be starting September 30. I can personally say 
I was on the hiring committee and I am beyond excited to bring Janae on board. So when we do this again in October, Janae will be here. Um, and so uh, keep an eye out on state library communication channels for uh, her email address and contact info. I know she's going to want to get to know all of you and see all of you. Um, speaking of our October session, I will put a link to register into the chat, um, but we will be joined by the um, team from iRead uh, because now that you have successfully wrapped up 2022, believe it or not, we get to start thinking about summer library programming 2023. Um, so the iRead team will be here talking about the Find Your Voice theme, how you can get the manual, excuse me, resource guide and other downloads. Um, so that link is in the chat and please do join us for that. Um, sneak peek at November. I don't have this one in the in the chat yet or in the um, in Iowa Learns yet, but we will be doing a story time showcase. We're going to be talking about early literacy and story time. And Peg is on board to talk about how she sings during all her story times. Just kidding. No, Peg is not going to talk about singing during story time. We've got uh, someone else lined up to talk about singing during story time. But um, some really fabulous ideas here. We've got lots more great youth services programming coming. Um, so do plan to come to all of that and say hi to Janae when she starts at the end of the month. Um, it's going to be a great time. So thanks again, Peg. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, it's really a treat to hear what you've been up to. So thank you, Peg. Thank you. Have a great afternoon, everyone.